Hi, I'm Mike, and this is our Wyoming Life. Today we're taking a look at calving. Now calving is just around the bend and uh, just two months away actually. And we're gonna be knee deep in it before we even know it. So I wanted to take a really quick opportunity here to let you guys know that we do have some good news. Coming in April is the return of the 30 and 30. 30 videos in 30 days starting April 1st all the way through the end of the month and wrapping things up with another 24 hour live stream. It's right in the heart of calving and it's always a good time. This is our third year doing it. And uh, I can tell you by the end of it, I'm pretty tired, but that's okay because it's definitely worth it uh, to bring you guys along. We started it when COVID hit and I think that uh, over time uh, we saved uh, a lot of people's sanity by being able to come along with calving with us. So every single day you will have a brand new video in the month of April. This video today brought to you by FBN, Farmers Business Network. Uh, they are a great resource for farmers and ranchers across the United States. Check them out at fbn.com. And a little bit later on in today's video, we're gonna show how they can help you with calving and calving costs. Our goal today is to take you through basically a calving checklist. With calving just around the corner, uh, we never know what's gonna happen around here. So it's nice to have things set up and ready to go when we need them. And that brings us to our calving checklist. I've got tons of stuff around the shop for uh, animal first aid and, and animal welfare and all this kind of stuff. And, I'm, and I've got pretty much everything from IV sets to, to gauze to blood stop and different medications and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to calving, really there, we can break it down into two separate categories. Uh, we have calving assist, which is calf, helping mom have the calf. And then we have newborn calf assist, which happens afterwards when you've got the newborn calf. So let's get started with calving assist tools that we have here on the ranch and some of the most important tools that, uh, that we deal with on a daily basis during calving. This is our calving barn. It's uh, a place where I spend a lot of time in the, in the middle of winter. <laughs> I'm down here with, with cows and calves and I'm making sure that everybody is safe and everybody's okay. When we do have a problem, this is where we're going to bring the cow more than likely if the weather is a little bit worse outside. We do have an outside option that I'll show you next. But if we have uh, weather that we're dealing with, uh, we've got blizzards, all that kind of stuff, we're going to end up having to bring them into here. So this is actually our head gate. Uh, you've seen us use it in the past. It's all set up and ready to go. We'll make sure that it's greased up and oiled and, and everything else, but the calves or the cows will come through here and the number of calves that have been pulled in this little area, the calves that have been born, I, I couldn't even tell you. But I can tell you from this end, it's an interesting perspective. In here uh, is one option for helping a cow have a calf, but outside is a whole nother option. This is our AeroQuip Q86 squeeze chute, and it really has become a, another go-to option if we have to restrain a cow and help her have a calf. We've had calves already that have been born backwards. We've had cows that have been born sideways and every other way uh, right here inside this chute. We've also had some tragedies happen as well. Uh, even this spring, we had a cow that was sloughing her calf we had to bring her in and make sure she was okay and ended up doing a bunch of work on her right here in this chute if the weather's okay uh, it's actually easier to get them into this chute than it is to get them in the barn because they really don't want to go into enclosed areas but uh, this is definitely an option for us as well so these type of squeeze chutes are definitely invaluable when you're calving is invaluable a word Priceless, let's go with priceless. They're priceless, but they're not because they, they cost money. So either way, happy to be back in the shop. Uh, so along with the calving assist side of things, obviously having somewhere to put them, the squeeze chute, the head gate, um, even if you just have to tie a calf or a cow off to a, a fence and use another panel, whatever you have to do, somehow you have to immobilize that cow. I think I have probably assisted in a handful, if that, of uh, births in the field 
with a cow. And I can tell you, it was either with a cow that was a pet cow that was extremely comfortable being around me, or it was a very, very bad situation that I had to deal with. A cow coming, or a calf coming backwards, cow is down, she can't move, she's immobile, whatever it may be. Um, and usually those don't end very well. So if you can get a cow in, put them in the head gate, put them in the, in the squeeze chute, um, immobilize them somehow, that's gonna make the rest of your day a whole lot easier. The rest of the tools all have to do with that. Once you've got that cow in that spot, but then you've got a whole bunch of different options and ways to help her have that calf. Everything from an epidural, which uh, we can do. Uh, we actually use oxytocin, a little bit of lidocaine, and we're able to um, help out mom have that calf. But before you can even get that far, you gotta figure out what's going on. And you gotta get your hands up and in there, which really, <laughs> surprisingly enough, you need a whole lot of lube for. When it comes to calving, Lube is your best friend. This is actually a pre-mixed lube that we buy a few gallons of every single year and we use it by the gallon as well. This stuff comes in handy if you don't have a whole lot of time. You've got something happening, you've got to get it done. But we do have a little bit cheaper option um, for you as well. And that is this stuff. It's called J-Lube, uh, which works really well. This you just mix with water if you've got a little bit extra time or you got some help. Somebody can grab a bucket of water, you pour a bunch of, there's probably like a, uh, 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 I've never actually looked at the instructions. Um, J lube stirred into water to make liquid lubricant. So it doesn't even have like, you know, use a cup or anything like that. Just pour it in until it gets, uh, gets uh, as lubed as you need it to be. But that, that will definitely make, uh, make things a lot easier for you and for the cow because what you're gonna end up doing is either using chains, which I need to pick up some new chains. I like to buy new chains every single year. Or you're gonna be using straps like these uh, to be able to help get that calf out. So these kind of straps, um, what we do is we make a loop in each strap and we can get a loop around each um, leg of that calf. And then using handles like these, you can help get that calf out. Now, that's the easiest way to do things next to mom, just doing all the work herself. But occasionally we do run into problems. If you have a breech calf or something like that, then you're gonna use something like this. This is a calf jack, which honestly, I don't like using and I've actually avoided using for years. Um, I did run into a few situations where I had to use it. Again, usually didn't end well, but I have used it uh, in the last few years. And it's one of those things that once you learn how to use, you know, you gotta be really careful with it. You can, you can hurt mom, um, but this thing, there's no, there's no feeling to it. It's just like jacking up a car. Um, you can't feel how, how heavy that car is when you're using a jack, and kind of the same thing uh, with this. So you have to be very careful and uh, when you're getting that calf out. But basically, um, I've got some footage here of me using this thing to get a breech calf out. Um, luckily, the calf was alive and lived. So, um, Again, you want to make sure that you're being very careful if you use a calf jack. But it is something that you have to have around. We have a couple of them um, just in case we have a really busy day, I guess. So I think that's pretty much it for when it comes to assisting mom. Um, and obviously medications and stuff like that we're going to get into a little bit later. But there are um, some options there. Like I said, the oxytocin, the lidocaine, that kind of stuff. Um, for giving a cow an epidural, which you can do if you need to. Um, but uh, that's the basic gist of assisting mom in the calving process, or at least the equipment needed to do it. Um, the other thing that we're gonna look at is how do we help that calf after that calf's been born? And that's where um, we're gonna get into some more stuff, uh, medications, that kind of stuff. But let's talk about equipment to start with. Um, after a calf is born, and whether it's born in the field or it's born uh, <laughs> right there, uh, in the in the in the barn or in a in a in a, in a squeeze chute, um, this thing actually does come in handy. This is actually a calf catcher. Um, this is an old one that's been around the ranch for probably a hundred years, um, but still does its job. Just catches the calf right around the back of the leg if you're tagging or something like that. So that's an important thing. And, and the thing is, like around here, the first calf that we that we have born on the ranch is going to surprise us. So it's nice to start getting this stuff put together now so that we know where it's at. When that calf is born, that very first calf on the ranch, our first and main priority is going to be tagging that calf and making sure that we know who its mom is. So um, we use programs like Cattle Max to keep track of moms and their babies, but also we wanna make sure that we have tags available on the ranch at all times. So 
tags are important and we start carrying those with us uh, right about now just because we never know when we might have a calf that decides to uh, abandon ship and bail out early. Uh, we also have tagging guns that go right along with them. They, these guns are used to put the tags on and big suggestion that I have with the, with the tagging guns is that you have more than one. Um, chances are you're going to drop the thing in the field somewhere so I always like to have one extra still in the package ready to go in case I need it. This is a, a compact tagger which I'm really not too big of a fan of but they work pretty well also. So that's the big thing getting them tagged and getting them ready to go on the ranch to start their whole life. So our calf has a number whatever number that may be. And really, so numbering is a, is a thing too that a lot of people ask me about, like how do you number your cows? Um, as long as you're writing them down, does it really matter? Probably not. Um, we tend to number as they're born, so we'll start low, number one, usually, and that's the first calf born. Um, I think we're gonna keep that up because as, the, as we move into this more feedlot, uh, direct-to-consumer type thing, um, it is handy to know the oldest calves out there, and that's the quickest way to tell. The lower the number, the older the calf. The other thing that we're gonna do after we've got that calf tagged, oh, really quick. Um, also, some people tag um, with mom's number and the calf's number, so you match numbers, which works great if you're writing your own tags. Uh, you can get blank tags, you can write numbers on them too. That works really well. Um, after we've got that calf tag, we've got iodine. We buy this stuff by the gallon also. We put it in the spray bottles and we're able to spray the umbilical cord or dip it um, if, they, if we can. And um, that stops the infection from, from hopefully going up inside that umbilical cord. It's gonna fall off in a few days anyway, but this is kind of a little bit of uh, um, preventative maintenance. So all this stuff that we have here, we wanna know where it's at at all times. I make sure that I've got, either it's with me or I know exactly where it's at. There's nothing worse than um, being in some sort of emergency where you have to do something. You tell somebody, hey, go grab me the, the calf jack. I, I need that right away. Um, and then you have to try to remember where it's at or try to send them to the right place to get it. So having things in a place where you know they're at, go get me the calf jack. It's in the barn on the right. Boom, boom, boom. They've got it and they're able to bring it to you. Same thing um, with the lube, with iodine, anything that you may need. Um, just make sure you've got it in one spot um, to, make, to make it a lot easier for yourself and for anybody that's helping you out. We're going to take a look at one last tool that we use here on the ranch to help save calves' lives in just a minute. But first, we have to go up to the office and take a look at FBN and see how FBN can help us with calving. All right, guys. This is kind of the nice part. I get to come in and actually take care of this right here on the computer, get ordered what I need to order, and FBN does all the work. So all we have to do is go to FBN.com. We click on shop after we have our account made. And quick and easy, we just go to uh, animal health. And look at that. Get ready, set, it's calving season. Right here, buy one, get one from now until March 31st. Uh, that is milk replacer or colostrum. Uh, we use it quite often. Great thing to have. We're gonna get a couple of those. Just add those to the cart. I also wanna dig into animal health supplies. Um, this is where you can find all your syringes, all that kind of stuff. Once it loads up here, our internet's really slow today. I mean, pretty much everything that we're talking about in today's video, you can get um, online through FBN, whether it's syringes, medications, um, all kinds of stuff. So vaccines, it's all right here. And if you have something you're looking for, all you gotta do is search.
and it's that simple. I'm gonna finish putting my order together. Um, usually I can have everything from these guys within just a few days as well. So um, really quick, let's just uh, do a quick search for some medication. I like having Banamine on hand. As well, and I like having new floor on hand too. So that's pretty much it. Uh, got it all put in, throw in a credit card number, and they sent it off to me. It's all online, fbn.com. Their online store uh, makes things so much easier, whether you're looking at stuff for livestock or uh, for the farm side of things, it's all right there. So check it out, fbn.com. Now, let's head back down to the shop. I'm a huge fan of ordering stuff online, so works out great for me. We've got one more tool that I wanna bring out for you guys and show you guys, and I know you've seen it in the past, but it's something that I don't think that I could live without, and I know a lot of calves on the ranch definitely couldn't have lived without. All right, guys, this is our calf warmer. This is something that uh, we've used tons of times on the ranch. And it's something that has saved many calves lives and saved me a lot of heartache. Um, this thing is made by Condors Manufacturing and is a plastic polyurethane type of uh, construction. It has a grate in the bottom, um, but the big feature of this whole thing is the heater, which is really remarkable. In fact, this year I'm actually putting a new heater in it. Uh, this is the MetaHeat um, calf warmer heater. Uh, it is the only certified heater that's made for use within these calf warmers. I'm gonna put a link down in the description. You guys can check this stuff out for yourself. Um, this little thing has worked and worked and worked. In fact, um, I'm putting in a new one only for the reason that I can't find my old one. Uh, <laughs> I had one in here, I think it might've gotten stolen for something else. So um, this is a brand new heater that we're putting in. The great thing about these heaters is that, you know, when you, when you start putting calves in here and they've got straw on them or hay on them or whatever else, um, there's, def there's kind of a fire danger, right? So the, one of the great things about these heaters is they actually have filters that go over the intakes and that way you don't have to worry about getting any type of straw or anything else inside. If I can get it open. There we go. Inside this heater and down by the elements. So um, there's probably instructions here. Yep, this side up. Okay, well, it's not that hard. So these filters actually go right over the intakes. You're able to take them off, you can clean them. You can do whatever you need to, but you want to make sure, well, that's pretty slick, they fit right on there, um, that you've got them on here to keep that calf as safe as possible. This uh, heater out actually has three settings too, which I've never talked about in the past, but we use quite often. It's basically got uh, a high and a low. Um, so if you've got a calf that's in, in a huge amount of danger, you go straight to the high setting. It's got a low setting, which is good for, for warming up calves as well. And then also it has just a, a cool air setting, which I found when I'm getting ready to take a calf out of the warmer, um, if I use this setting for a little while, I've actually found that calves do a little bit better uh, by just putting that cool air on them. And it's not even cool air, it's room air, uh, room temperature air, but it's, it's gonna move that air over them uh, without the heating effect, but also gives them a chance to breathe. That high setting, obviously you're getting as hot as air as possible into the lungs, trying to warm up that hypothermic calf. But uh, low setting is just warming them up. That, that cool air setting, I think, is one of the coolest things about these heaters um, that are able to uh, acclimate our calves back to the, to the cooler air. Because I have had calves in the past that uh, we have heated up, um, we've gotten really warm, and then they hit that cold air and they just go downhill fast. So being able to use uh, a warm temp or a cool uh, setting on this thing has actually, I think, saved calves also. So um, I'm going to insert this thing into the, into the, into the, uh, the calf warmer here and uh, we'll be good to go. So this is the bracket that holds the heater in place. 
And the only thing that I really don't like about this is the fact that when you, once you put this in place, so it's gonna blow air up in there, you kind of lose access to your switches and your buttons and whatnot. Um, you can still get to them, but you can't really see what you're doing. So that's my only complaint that I would say. But other than that, which is really just kind of nitpicking, if you ask me, because um, you can always, you know, take it back out and look at it and get it get it set to what you need to get it set to. But um, that's that's really the only thing that that I, I don't like about it. So. Um, we are going to basically, I got to clean this up. I got to sanitize it and all that kind of good stuff, but I'll skip all that for you. And uh, we'll do a quick run through of what we got. And uh, hopefully we're all set for cabbing. Like I said earlier, I like to uh, keep everything in one centralized spot. For me, that's right here in the shop. I've actually set up a little area. Let's see if I can show you here. This area right here, um, actually used to be where my father-in-law Gilbert had a couch. He would sit here <laughs> and, uh, and have lunch. But um, now I've actually taken an old counter, got it in here. Um, this is where we make bottles for the calves, our bottle calves. But also it's where I pretty much store everything that I know has to do with calving. And I think that that's, that's one of the most helpful things is being able to find things when you need it. So, and trust me, I've been there where you can't find it, anything when you need it. So I like to keep everything pretty well uh, centralized in the same place. Uh, on this side is all about uh, bottles, obviously, tons of bottles in here. Um, these are all the cups from all the milk replacer we've had to buy. Here's a good example. These milk replacer bags, bags of milk replacer for bottle calves cost about 75 bucks a piece. So these are cups that come with the bags of milk replacer. Um, I think this is just the last uh, couple of years. So uh, 150, 300, 900. <laughs> 1200 $1,500, there's like $2,000 worth of milk replacer. And all I got was these stupid cups. But I should be drinking whiskey out of them. That's what I should be doing. On this side uh, is where we keep a lot of our medications and stuff like that. So um, like I said, we've got antibiotics uh, that I need replaced. We've got more antibiotics, seven way, dewormer, banamine, which is great stuff. If you can um, get your vet to give you a prescription for, for banamine that you can keep on hand, uh, I don't know how many times this has saved me with little calves. Uh, new floor, which we took a look at earlier. Um, I've got some of that left over. Maybe didn't need to order some, but I did anyway. Um, there's more banamine. Dang it. I should have came and checked this before I ordered. Uh, but it'll, it'll definitely last. So all that stuff is up here. Also scour tablets. I've got a few bags of colostrum, but definitely that buy one, get one um, through FBN right now is it takes take advantage of that because that will save you money in the long run. If you are setting up your own calving um, checklist already, uh, this is my toolbox. This was actually left to me by a harvest toaster last year or the year before um, and here. I keep my syringes, needles, all that kind of stuff um, that I'm going to need. I've also got balling guns for any type of pill type medication. Um, I've also got uh, calf paste, which is something that um, you should look at, uh, whether it's through FBN or, or whoever. Um, calf paste is something that will definitely help a calf out. Um, get some that uh, the supplements that they need right away, especially if they're in trouble. So I've got a couple extra drawers there, so I'm gonna have to, to fill those up also. So thanks guys for coming along with me. I do appreciate it. Um, calving is one of the most important times on the ranch, if not the most important. Uh, even now, as we switch from this cow-calf operation to this direct-to-consumer type of operation, calves are the future of the ranch. Whether they're steers that are gonna enter our feedlot program, or they're heifers that are gonna be replacement heifers, or maybe even bred heifers or uh, that we sell um, to, to other producers, um, when it comes to it, calving is the most important time. And that's why I am so happy that I'm gonna be able to bring you along in April for the 30 and 30. And uh, at the end with the 24 hour live stream, guys, it is so much fun. I hope that you're able to join us. 
and uh, we've got what another month or so before we get there so it's I, I can't wait I, I'm really uh, really rip roaring ready to go we've got some cool stuff planned for the 30 and 30 this year um, we've got some guests planned we've also got giveaways during the 30 and 30 that you'll be able to take part in everything from our Wyoming Life meat packages to uh, to beef jerky to merchandise to our our partners that are giving stuff away and it's just it's just a party for an entire month here and uh Trust me, by the end of it, I look like I've been partying for a month too. So guys, thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna take the rest of the day and get all this stuff put together, put away, cleaned up, and ready to go because calving, well, it can start anytime. So be sure to subscribe, follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary, and don't miss a video because it's gonna get exciting here in just a little bit. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time on our Wild Life.